can see and hear me fine. A little distorted, but not bad. Okay, not bad. Uh, let me fix the microphone a little bit. Um, how about this? Is this better? That's better. Yeah, you have some better? static. You have some me. static. There's some static. Um, let's see if if I can fix this. Um, all right, switching to a different microphone. Is this better? That's better. Yes. This is better. Okay, yeah. so so I'll use this microphone. I have like four microphones. <laughs> okay, so, so it's good then. Yeah, I'm re really happy to be here. Uh, and um, I guess I'll just begin uh, with a maybe very short 10 minutes uh, introduction of the current work that we're focusing on. Uh, and then we just launch into a free discussion. Is that the idea? Yeah, you can go 15 if you want. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, I can go 15 if I want. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, if I want to share a screen, uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, uh, the boss is Cherry, so she'll, anything you want. Okay. You can right, if if you can, like, yes, give me it the is screen activated. sharing. Yep. Per, uh, it's, it's activated. Yep. So let me try sharing my screen just a second, um, because I have some cute dog pictures. I would like to show you, uh, and if it doesn't work uh, through screen share, then I just physically hold the iPad. Um, that that's my plan B, uh, and let's see if we can get it to work. Um, so sharing screen, um, sharing a application, uh, sharing the Air Server application. Uh, with any luck, ah, it should okay. be the cute dog. Okay, maybe two cute dogs. Okay, it's good? Yeah, we got it. Okay, yeah. excellent. All right, so let, let's get started. Um, so, hello, I'm Audrey Tong, Town's Digital Minister in charge of social innovation and open government, also youth engagement. Uh, my current work is to bring, I guess, the demos over demics, that is to say, to strengthen democracy during the pandemic and also the infodemic. Uh, and our main idea is called Humor Over Rumor. Uh, which solves both the pandemic and the infodemic with the um, power of fun. Uh, and what you're looking at is the spoke stock, literally a Shiba Inu uh, of the Taiwan CECC Central Epidemic Command Center. And this dog is telling you uh, in not uncertain terms that please wear a mask to protect yourself from your own unwashed hand. Uh, and this is a beautifully crafted message because not only did it uh, appeal entirely to rational self-interest, but also makes, you know, masks um, a really kind of personal statement that you would like to wear even if there's nobody nearby. Uh, other messages such as where must to protect the elderly, where must to respect others and so on, doesn't have the same basic transmission rate uh, as this simple message. And our idea is very simple. For all the conspiracy theories, uh, we counter them within a couple of hours uh, with this very funny picture. This one talks about physical distancing, uh, which you probably already figured out uh, in terms of Shiba Inus. Uh, this one remembers uh, to cover your mouth and nose when sneezing. Uh, and when we're uh, dealing with a conspiracy theory, this says tissue papers are running out. Uh, we even have the head of our cabinet, um, Su Zhen Chang, as you can see here, that's his front side. Uh, showing his backside and wiggling it a little bit. And this is a wordplay that says each of us only have one pair of buttons because you see in Mandarin, it's a homonym uh, uh, to stockpile twin sounds the same as bottoms twin. So this uh, is basically saying, you know, you can't use that much anyway. Um, and with a very factual table that says tissue papers are from South American materials while medical masks are uh, from domestic materials. And so people who laugh about it is literally immune, uh, like vaccine of the mind from conspiracy theory involving tissue papers because everyone will understand, you know, while we are ramping up the production of masks from 2 million a day to 20 million a day, there is pretty much no way that the tissue paper production will be hampered because of it. And because of that, uh, within just a couple of days, the panic buying just died down. So this is of course obvious tackling both pandemic but with no lockdown and tackling the infodemic and with no takedown with no takedown by the administration and so another thing I would like to highlight of this digital social innovation uh, which actually has three pillars fast 
fair and fun. And I spent, uh, I guess, way too much time to talk about fun because I like to talk about the part. But there's also the fast part and also the fair part. The fast part pertains to the collective intelligence system because in Taiwan, we have this social sector uh, data collisions. That is to say, when people want to figure out what actually happens in Wuhan, uh, and that's last December, people just uploaded on the PTT, which is a Taiwanese equivalent of Reddit, except, of course, it's not owned by a business sector. It's not by the public sector either. It's literally pet project, side project of National Taiwan University students. Um, and so it has been like um, around for more than 20 years. Um, and so it's the go-to place for this young doctor with the name No More Pipe that reposted Dr. Li Wenliang's whistleblowing and get a, a professionals essentially triaging what's actually going on uh, in Wuhan. And before long, actually within 24 hours, they get into this rough consensus that this looks really legit. And so the next thing we know, not only did we send an email to WHO, but we started health inspections uh, for offline passengers coming in from Wuhan, thanks to this collective intelligence serving as essentially a early warning system. So Li Wenliang literally saved the Taiwanese people. Um, of course, he didn't get to save the Wuhan people. But anyway, uh, that is because, uh, of course, the difference uh, in the civil liberties, in the freedom of speech, of assembly, of free, um, the press, and so on. According to the Civicus Monitor, Taiwan is the only jurisdiction in the whole of Asia where a minister's word uh, holds the same um, power as a journalist's word, or for that matter, a random pseudonymous young doctor's word uh, on the PTT. And so this enables us to build a very fast response loop that basically says anyone who watched the daily 2 p.m. live stream can call this toll-free number 1922. Of course, there are high tech ways like chatbots and so on, but for anyone, they just call 1922 and they can say, uh, we didn't quite get what the minister was saying, uh, Chen Shizhong was saying. Uh, and so please repeat that to me slowly again, explain like I'm fine. Perhaps the caller is five. Um, and so the call center people will always explain in no uncertain terms. But sometimes it's also a feedback loop, like a social innovation uh, loop. For example, there was a young boy, like really young, who called, um, I think, uh, 12th of April saying, you're rationing out masks, and all I get as a young boy are those pink medical masks. Uh, and I don't want to wear pink to school. My classmates will laugh at me, uh, do something about it. Uh, so the call center people doesn't know how to handle this call. And so it got escalated all the way to the CECC because I was there when it was escalated up to the CECC. And the very next day, uh, all the medical officers, regardless of gender, in the daily live stream uh, press conference wore pink. Um, and uh, uh, Minister Chen Shizhong even said that his childhood hero was the pink panzer. Uh, and so the young boy became the most hit boy in the class where only he has the color that the heroes wear. And I guess also hero's hero wear uh, for some value of wear. Uh, and so uh, all the trending brands actually changed their avatars on social media pink. Uh, so for a while, pink became the, the most hip color. Um, and then of course, a lot more people is willing to wear masks and wash their hands because of that. Um, and so the solution is not only gender mainstreaming, also promotes social innovation, because now people know uh, if you call 1922 with a random idea, chances are that administration will actually amplify your idea to the country. Um, and so later on, there is a professor, Lai Chen Yu, uh, that uh, actually got uh, experiments going with the traditional rice cookers and says, if you don't add water to the traditional rice cooker, it will very quickly heat up and kill the virus, but doesn't kill the mask. Uh, and so you can end up using the mask quite a few times uh, using the uh, dry cooking, dry steaming method. Um, and so of course it looks uh, ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous, but it's scientifically true. And once the TFDA or Food and Drug Administration repeated the experiment, you see Minister Chen Shizhong actually cooking a mask on the uh, 2 p.m. Uh, live press conference. While Professor Lai Chen <coughs> explained the theory uh, on the press conference. So that's um, very quick. And also, collective intelligence is not uh, a top down thing. And finally, I want to talk about fairness. In Taiwan, there's this uh, movement called G0V or Gov0. Uh, we look, um, we, because I wear two hats, uh, we look uh, at all the government digital services, which is always something that GOV.TW and fork, taking it to a different direction, then build alternative websites, something that G0V.TW. So just by changing O to a zero on your browser bar, you get into the shadow government, which is always more fun. Uh, and it's based on the same public data, but it's also offered in a free of, uh, like free as in freedom way 
to uh, allow more forex um, in the civil society. So case in point, there was a um, young civic technologist uh, in uh, Tainan city, name is Howard Wu. Uh, what we have seen is uh, his work, uh, making sure that the people who can uh, look at a map on their phone, they can find the nearby place that has the most mask in stock. And this was in like very early February. Uh, and so once we discovered that his um, idea went uh, viral, uh, then we decide to trust him with the open data in real time. When open data becomes real time, it's called open API. So we ask all the pharmacists to publish their mask availability every 30 seconds. So it became like a distributed ledger where more than 100 different tools, including chatbots and so on, all can visualize as you queue in line. You can see the person queuing before you take their national health card, which covers 99.99% of people and uh, look in real time that this become 186, meaning that they use a child's uh, IC card and purchased 10 medical masks per due two, day, uh, two weeks. That's uh, our rationing. And so because of that, if you see rather the number increase rather than decrease, uh, when the person before you queuing in line uh, purchase something, you would call 1922 right there. So this is participatory accountability, just like a uh, distributed ledger where everybody gets to audit uh, the system. And this increased the trust throughout the country and also made sure that people who look at the distribution can actually analyze the trend, uh, just like a like real exchange. Uh, and then <clears throat> there was a MP, a member of parliament that said um, to Minister Chen Shijong in interpolation, it looks fair on the map. But if you zoom it out uh, using OpenStreetMap, you can see it's actually unfair uh, because for people in more, the more rural places, the distance may look the same um, on air, but actually using public transportation, they will have to spend hours to get to the pharmacy. Maybe the pharmacy is already closed uh, by then. So it's actually silently unfair. And Minister Chen, instead of defending, simply said, a legislator teach us because we have the same evidence. So we started co-creating with the community and the very next day, we wrote out this 24 hour uh, pre-ordering mask and you can pick it up in nearby convenience stores. And so not limited by the opening hours of the pharmacies anymore. So um, Da Hong and the um, uh, member of the parliament who was a VP of data analytics at Foxconn Group uh, said yesterday's interpolation become tomorrow's improvement. And so that is actually evidence-based co-creation. And in the time of the pandemic, this is what makes everyone in Taiwan feel that we can actually uh, be part of this collective intelligence and join, of course, also on helping uh, the world. And uh, a lot of this playbook you can find in Taiwan can help that us. And so I don't think this is 15 minutes, uh, but I will just stop here.